Hello, I am Guy Lewis Frechette. This video is a summary of Level 1 discussions from Sexual Orientation 101 and Sexual Orientation 102. Welcome to Sexual Orientation 110, Frequently Asked Questions. If we wanted to prove people were born gay, how would we do it? We would need a batch of identical twins separated at birth. If all twins had the same sexual orientations, it would prove genetic orientation. If all twins were separated at birth, it would disprove environmental orientation. This has been done many times in many ways without success, but we have learned a few things. We are pretty sure there's no gay gene, there is no straight gene. Identical twins have higher rates of same sexual orientations than non-identical twins. Doesn't that show a genetic link? No. Identical twins are much more likely to experience similar conditioning and non-identical twins are much more likely to experience different conditioning. Non-identical twins are much more likely to go through their developmental stages emphasizing their differences. They often choose different friends, activities, and interests to distinguish themselves from each other in order to form their own unique identity. Identical twins are more likely to go through their developmental stages emphasizing their similarities. They often choose the same friends, interests, and activities to distinguish themselves as a pair as their mirror image sibling validates their uniqueness. Since the twins with the same genes often have the same conditioning and the twins with different genes have different conditioning, there is no way to tell if orientation is due to genes or conditioning. When a mom has several boys, the oldest with the highest exposure to male hormones is least likely to be gay. The youngest with the lowest exposure to male hormones is most likely to be gay. Doesn't that show a biological link? No. Prediction rates are so low it is about the same as flipping a coin. And it ignores environmental factors. Take Alan for example. His same-sex erotic attraction was classically conditioned by his exposure to his older brother's sexual activities. With two brothers, the chance of exposure doubles. With three, it triples. Since brothers typically share bedrooms and bathrooms, it's easy to see that more brothers means more exposure and more chances of classically conditioned same-sex erotic attraction. How long does classical conditioning last and can it be changed? Classical conditioned erotic attraction pretty much lasts forever, but we can condition our additional erotic attractions and choose between them. A good example would be Cindy and Davis. Both experience same sex and opposite sex classical conditioning. In the end, both chose their preferred sexual orientations. Do people choose their sexual orientation? No. Almost all classical conditioning that leads to erotic attraction is random. Almost always, operant conditioning that determines our sexual values takes place before we realize that our indoctrination was the result of social bonding. How long does operant conditioning last and can it be changed? Operant conditioning never stops changing us. Anytime we experience social bonding with people, associations, or media, we are also indoctrinating ourselves to their ideology, which can move us up or down the scale of sexual values. All we have to do is read a book, watch a movie. If we relate to a character on a personal level, we are absorbing their ideology. Are there any credible sources that will officially state people are born gay? No, not the American Psychological Association, not the American Psychiatric Association, not the American Medical Association, not even GBLT promotional groups like Gay Lesbian Education Network and Gay Straight Alliance will openly claim that people are born gay. Are there any other things that are classically conditioned? Yes, phobias. We are all afraid of something like spiders, snakes, and clowns. It is because of classical conditioning. Minor attractions. We are all attracted to particular hairstyles, body type, eye color, etc. It's because of classical conditioning. Fetishes. We are all attracted to something that might be considered a little bit weird. Things like feet, 
tattoos, doorknobs, animal fur, etc., all classically conditioned. Inappropriate erotic attractions, such as sexual attraction to children, animals, and dead people, all classically conditioned. How can you be so sure that classical conditioning is the source of erotic attraction? There are two reasons, science and professional experience. Science has shown us that classical conditioning is the only way to manipulate the autonomic nervous system which manages all forms of erotic attraction. When we look at scientific evidence, we have to admit that born gay is a myth or superstition. If we were also to assume that classical conditioning was not involved, there wouldn't even be anything to guess at. It would be a complete blank. We would be totally clueless. As a professional therapist, whether it be for phobias, unwanted or inappropriate sexual attractions, it has been my experience it is almost always possible to find the initial classical conditioning as the source of erotic attraction. Are the characters in the case studies real people? Yes, they are real people, but not individuals. Each character represents a story I have heard many times by many different people. I chose these characters because they are common stories. Do you have additional sources for research? Yes, the American Psychological Association, PsychNet, and Wikipedia. If you would like to discuss, promote, or follow, I am easy to find. This is a GLF production, no rights reserved, which means it can be passed around freely and used for educational purposes.